Hello there, my name is Peter Irish. I'm the CEO of the Barrett Group. And as you know, we like to talk to industry experts every once in a while to help our clients and our prospective clients to better understand how those industries are evolving. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Chris Goddard today from the Mayo Clinic, who's going to be sharing his perspectives on the hospital industry uh, and also on his company, as well as his own career path. Welcome, Chris. Chris Gatti, I'm Chief Public Affairs Officer at Mayo Clinic. Our team is responsible for really three areas of focus, um, what we call consumer communications. Um, it's our outreach to consumers around the world, primarily through earned, owned, and social media, but also through patient communications. Uh, we're also responsible for what we call um, client and internal engagement. So all of our staff engagement strategies at Mayo Clinic, but the support we provide for areas of focus within practice, education, and research, including our support of our philanthropy program at Mayo in development. And the third area of focus for us is called external relations. All of the work we do to support our government engagement strategies, our community relations strategies, but also managing the reputation of the organization. Uh, we, we work across Mayo Clinic, including uh, for our um, sites here in the upper Midwest in Minnesota and um, also in Arizona, in Phoenix, in Scottsdale, along with Jacksonville, Florida. Um, our primary focus is um, expanding and strengthening the reputation of Mayo Clinic, and in some cases, protecting that reputation and really extending the influence of our organization with key stakeholders inside and outside of Mayo and helping support um, strategies to meet our policy objectives at the federal and state levels. Thank you very much for that comprehensive introduction. Um, obviously, we hear the news every day about COVID-19 and its impacts on the frontline workers and on uh, the population. And it is, it is a horrible time and you're really rising to the challenge in an amazing way, all of you. But uh, I wonder if you could sort of rise above the daily and think a little bit about the future uh, of the industry, uh, for example. What does this situation mean for your industry or perhaps for your company if you wish to address it? Thanks, Peter. Uh, it really has accelerated the pace of change in healthcare. Uh, we know as an industry, healthcare is going to disrupt. Um, it needs to respond um, more to and, and be better aligned with consumer expectations moving forward. Um, so uh, for reasons of safety, so much of care shifted to remote and, and in fact uh, shifted to virtual care. Um, in the earliest days of COVID-19, it's evolved now to more of a mixed model. And I would offer that's likely what we're going to see, a more mixed model of care where um, patients, a portion of them receive them their care virtually, either through perhaps a more digital approach to care or through a more um, platform-based model that we see in other industries. Um, and what it really permits us to do as providers in many ways is to deliver a more um, tailored approach to an individual's care, one that's more convenient for them as patients and their families but also um, brings them to the inpatient part of care, either in, an, in a clinic setting or on a hospital setting where um, we know that's what they need and um, the, the care is more targeted, more efficiently and more effectively delivered. So it really has accelerated the pace of change, pushing it forward almost several, you know, several years to a decade in terms of of what we anticipated coming in terms of future models of care delivery. So, and it's good that consumers candidly are a bit more comfortable with that approach than they perhaps have been in the past. And it's, it's incumbent on us in healthcare to really surround patients with those services that match those expectations. It might seem to shift the compass a little bit more towards prevention and early detection, I suppose, because these are the kinds of uh, things that you can do remotely as opposed to uh, acute care. Um, but as I, as I look at the whole hospital industry, I mean, we, we hear constantly about a lack of surge beds, a lack of ventilators, you know, all of these things. 
what uh, what do you expect? Uh, how would you expect the hospital industry to respond? Will they build excess capacity? Are we looking at a surge of growth uh, in employment and that sort of thing? Or what would you expect normal to look like in uh, two to five years? Uh, I, I would anticipate that actually what we will see is more um, services delivered in a remote way so that patients can be monitored for their conditions. Um, when they're diagnosed, um, prior to them being seen in an inpatient or in an outpatient clinic setting. And then once the, their, um, their um, problem is addressed, them returning to more remote care um, versus staying in an inpatient setting. So it distributes the model of care delivery um, and what, we, what it will require is capabilities for providers to do that remote monitoring once an initial diagnosis is made. Um, it, it actually will permit us to deliver that care more efficiently and will require less building up of facilities to support it. It will, it will not change necessarily the numbers of providers we need um, it, it could reduce them to a degree, but it will really require new skill sets, new technology to support that type of care model. So a part of what we're going to see moving forward is um, um, skills and capabilities, perhaps more available in other industries being transferred into healthcare um, to, over time. Well, that's a wonderful segue. As you know, we help uh, executives uh reflect on their career objectives and perhaps change them, particularly when there's so many industries that are under duress or, or booming. Uh, people obviously reflect on that. And the, one of the key questions is uh, transferable skills. How do we identify transferable skills and how do we then match them up with industries where they might be uh, ideally suited? I think I mentioned to you earlier, we had a stock picker one time whose uh, analytical skills seemed to be a little bit out of date for his uh, industry and he suffered a bit from ageism, but uh, we helped him and he identified big data as a perfect place for him to apply his pattern recognition skills. Just to give you a short example, um, how do you see uh, transferable skills uh, that executives might bring to the table? What uh, I realize it's a very general question, but what skills would you think could be valuable in this context um, and where would you look to find them? Well, certainly the example you cite, Peter, is one um, uh, analysis of big data. Mostly what we need is not more data. We need insights to advance not only care delivery, but, but also what's the right way for organizations to um, modify their business strategy to support their overall mission. So any skill set that really permits um, you to offer insights into data is going to be well served. Um, also, um, especially in that digital space, um, and and how do you um, transfer what had been inpatient services into a more virtual setting is going to be skills that are going to be needed over time. Um, and we're seeing just an acceleration of growth in that space. Um, I, I would also offer that healthcare as an industry in total um, really would benefit from the skills and acumen from a more business-based model, including skills around agile and agile mindset, um, accelerating process um, processes, business processes, um, which um, many healthcare organizations have introduced, but not the majority of healthcare organizations. So bringing that business mindset and approach into a healthcare organization uh, that's a de healthcare delivery organization, I think will th those skill sets are well, well suited as we move forward. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. No. We say in our career uh, management industry that we like to be both high tech and high touch. So we, we were virtual uh, already back in 2017, but we still try to retain that high touch relationship with executives because they, they don't want to uh, deal with a, a, an artificial intelligence, uh, you know, talking in a flat voice and, and basically being impersonal. Um, how do you see that shaking out? If you talk about more remote care, um, there will be a place, I'm sure, for AI, but there'll also be a place for the a high 
touch, a, a caring, um, empathetic uh, kind of service provider. Uh, how do you see this, uh, this separation going forward? Yeah, I, I think it's just critically important that there, there's people that have the, the technical skills, the, the, the abilities through things like machine learning and artificial intelligence to be applied to the work we do, but there's the human side of healthcare that will never change. It's, it may be delivered in new and different ways. So how do you apply that human side of healthcare into a, a modified delivery model and consider um, is your skill set something that is easily transferable, um, will resonate strongly, um, and, and there's no question, there's, we, we, we will always have inpatient, the inpatient side of healthcare delivery. So how do you apply it into two worlds? And some will remain firmly rooted in face-to-face -face interaction with patients. So I would just offer, there's a whole spectrum of opportunity um, as there always tends to be. It's just a matter where you feel you know, your strengths and, and really passions lie. Well, thank you for that word of uh, encouragement to a lot of uh, executives who approach us at the moment, obviously somewhat beleaguered if they're in the hospitality or some of the other industries that have been so badly affected. What about on the personal side? Are there any particular personal anecdotes that you might like to share with us uh, about your, your, your own uh, situation and how you came to be where you are? Sure. Um, and I'm an unusual person in that I've been at Mayo Clinic now more than 31 years. I actually started as an intern um, back in the late 1980s. And one thing I would just offer for people, um, it's in my mind, um, it's good to be part of an organization for an extended period of time. But I think it's really incumbent upon people in, in those places to really reinvent themselves and also to be confident in taking detours in your career path um, into areas that maybe you haven't been previously to experience new and different responsibilities. Um, along the way for myself personally, um, various times I've raised my hand and said, this is something I would be interested in um, for, to, for me to grow professionally um, and based on personal interest. Um, so as a, an example of that, one of the areas that I got involved in along the way was the establishment of what we call the Mayo Clinic Health Policy Center. Um, it really brought me into a space that I hadn't previously experienced and really uh, rounded out some of my skills and capabilities. So I, I would just encourage, even for those people long tenured at an organization, find ways to get, um, identify new and different responsibilities every four to five years along the path as those who would move from organization to organization. So you continue to grow, experience new things along the way. Well, that was excellent, inspiring, and also quite expansive. So thank you for that, Chris. Um, what other advice might you have for executives uh, who are considering a change of industry or who have been on the market and are finding it hard to find that perfect opportunity? As it relates to healthcare in total, one thing that I would offer will never change is the types of people that are drawn to do good things for people. It's very much a mission-driven, um, patient-centered industry, and it affords great opportunity to see the value of the impact you can have for patients and their families. There's nothing quite like it. And although healthcare will be disrupted, we're gonna experience profound change. It will always remain firmly rooted in supporting the needs of patients and their families. And that's extremely rewarding and really offers a great value for people who really seek that in the work they do day in and day out. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for coming on our hiring line today and sharing uh, so much uh, inspiring information with uh, our audience. We wish you great success and please stay healthy. Take care. Thank you.